Hi, this is John from JavaFXTutorials.com, welcoming you to my tutorial on the checkbox. This video is used to accompany an entry I made on my website, JavaFXTutorials.com. So if I go to my tutorial section here, you can see the entry right here for checkboxes. So before we begin, I'm just going to give you a quick live demonstration of what the checkbox is doing. So here's my demonstration live. If you click on any of these uh, sports, it basically adds them to the list and it also counts how many sports that I have chosen. This is how I start every new demonstration. I'm going to create two new projects, the FX application and the FXML, both to do the same thing. For the FX application, I'm going to give it some kind of a name ending with FX so I can keep it separate from the FXML. Once I'm done that, I'm going to create the other version in FXML, giving it the same name with FXML at the end of it. This will help me sort things out later when I go to work on both projects at the same time because in the end they're both going to do the same thing. So now that I'm done, the FX version, I'm going to erase all of the code except for the last four or five lines. I am going to need a stack pane or some kind of a pane as well as a scene and a stage. So I'm going to clean everything else out there as well as the comments at the very top of the code. Moving on to the FXML, the first thing I do is I go to Scene Builder and I delete the label and the button. Just click on both of those and just delete with the delete key and I'm going to design my own interface later. I'll save it for now and the last place I go is the controller for the FXML document. I'm going to delete the label here as well that I deleted from the form as well as the code and handle button action so I can write my own code later. Lastly, I'm going to remove the comments at the top and I'm ready to start my demonstration. So I'm going to copy the code one step at a time from my website. First I'm taking a look at the imports here. Now you don't normally have to type these out, but I wanted to show these first just to remind you that they are needed and they will come up and NetBeans will ask you to import them as you start typing your code. Make sure you always get the JavaFX version of the import if other ones are available. So coming into the class, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my checkboxes that I need, three of them for the three sports, as well as the two labels, LBL total and LBL list. Before we get into the start of the program, I'm also going to declare two VBoxes, which are going to be used to contain the checkboxes and the labels. Remember, VBoxes are vertical boxes that we can use to group objects together. So I'm going to use one for the checkboxes and one for the labels. From here, we're going to go on to the start method. And the first thing I do is I construct the, the two VBoxes. So the first thing is VB checks, which is going to be my checkbox VBox. That's hard to say and we're going to set the spacing to 10 and the padding to 20. And we'll do the same thing for the VBox needed for the label. So I called this VB labels and exactly the same thing. I'm going to set the spacing to 10 and set the padding to 20. I have a tutorial on VBoxes too if you're not familiar with them. You can check it out on my YouTube channel. So now that I've got my VBoxes uh, created, I'm going to create my three checkboxes. As you can see here, they're very easy to make. You just create a new checkbox and you pass in the caption that you want the checkbox to say beside it. Also, the labels are also very similar to make. Um, you'll see here when I declare them that you basically do the same thing. You create a new label and you pass the caption in for each of the two labels that you've got. All right, so once we've constructed the V boxes and the components for inside of them, we can then go ahead and we can start adding them to the V boxes. Okay, so in two lines of code, I'm going to add everything to the two vertical boxes. So using the getChildren.addAll, I list the components I want to add to each VBox. So the first VBox gets the three checkboxes. The second VBox gets the two labels. Now before we move on, the other thing I've got to do with the checkboxes is I've got to attach action listeners. Okay, so this is the dot set on action. Okay, and what this does is it points to a method that will run whenever you click on one of the checkboxes. Now all three of these checkboxes are going to run the same method, which I have yet to define called handle button action. So for the meantime, um, you're going to see a little error message there until we actually um, put that in. All right, so we're now on to working with the flow pane. Okay, so then rather than a stack pane, I'm going to change that to a flow pane root equals new flow pane. And because I've got two V boxes going in, I'm going to set the horizontal gap to 20. And then we use the get children at all, and we add the VB checks and VB labels, which are my two V boxes. From there, we're going to define the handle button action event. So if I go down outside of the start method, this is how I start. I go public 
or private void rather, handle button action, action event E. And then in here, I'm going to declare two variables, one to count how many checkboxes, the other to list the checkboxes that I've selected. Okay, so basically using an if statement, I can decide whether something's been selected or not. So if I just go if chksport one dot is selected, okay, so that's the magic thing to say to, to determine whether it's been checked off or not. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm increasing count by one and I'm adding choices, uh, the text from the actual checkbox. All right, so then I'm gonna roll that out and I'm going to add that to the other um, two checkboxes as well, as you can see here. And from there, we print out the results to our two labels, LBL total and LBL list. LBL list simply just prints the uh, list of the choices with a new line separated between each one, and LBL total prints the count. Now remember, this method, handle button action, is going to run every time you click on a checkbox. That's whether you're turning it on or turning it off. So you basically have to start from zero and no choices every time. And when the user turns on or off a sport, you're pretty much refreshing the entire thing and going through all three again just to see which ones have been selected. All right, so this is how we do it in JavaFX. Next, we're going to look at how to do the exact same thing using FXML. On the FXML side, really all we have to do first is declare each checkbox and each label with the at FXML on top of it. This will allow us later on to communicate with the FXML document in Scene Builder. So I declare them each one per line. As long as I've got the at FXML above it, then it'll be reachable by the uh, document when we design it later, including the labels, because I'm going to be using the labels in my code. So they also have to be um, declared the same way with the at FXML. All right, now as far as the handle button action goes, the code is identical to the FX version. So if I just copy and paste the code over, there's no need to explain it again because it's the exact same code with the exact same logic. The only difference is it has the at FXML above it as well because this method needs to be accessible in the scene builder document. All right, so now we've got all of the code done in the controller. Remember, this is the controller document I'm working on now. Um, I can go ahead and double click on the FXML document and launch scene builder and that will allow me to quickly um, put in the, uh, the components I need for, for that. So here we are in Scene Builder, and the first thing I'm going to do is bring out three checkboxes. Now I'm just going to drag these out onto the anchor pane. It doesn't matter where they go because I'm eventually going to wrap them inside of a V-box. All right, while I'm at it, I'm going to grab the two labels that I need as well, and I'll bring those into place just over onto the one side here. Okay, so before I wrap these checkboxes, I'm just going to go to each one quickly and change the text property. So I can just come up here to the properties area in the top right and just type in the sport that goes with each one. All right, this will come in handy later when I ask each one to provide its get text property after I select them all. All right, so that would be uh, baseball and this one will be for football. All right, so now I'm ready to wrap these inside. So I'm going to just shift click each one of these. I'm going to go up to arrange, wrap in, VBox, and then you'll see how they quickly just group together into one control. All right, so I'm going to click on the VBox over here on the hierarchy, and in the layout section, I'm going to set the padding and the spacing just like I did through code with the FX version. Okay, so if I hit 20 and use the spread out arrow there, and then spacing of 10, and you can see how that updates right away in Scene Builder, and that looks pretty good just like that. All right, so over to the labels we go. Now, I can also double click a label if I want to change the text property. That saves me a little bit of time going over to the properties panel. All right, so this initial label is going to say uh, total sports chosen zero. Now in Scene Builder, I can more easily uh, manipulate the shape of each label. So with this other label, I'm going to spend some time just stretching it out a little bit so it's wider, and I'm going to pull it down so that it's a bit taller. All right, then I'll just double click inside to alter the text property by deleting it. All right, so that looks pretty good. The last step is to connect each thing to its FX ID. But before I do that, I think I'll spend a bit of time just going through changing some of the properties of this extra label. All right, so under the properties, I can go to the style area and I can choose things like the, um, the border color and I can choose the padding. So if I scroll up here, I can just find the FX border color is what I'm looking for. There it is there. And if I go hashtag 000, that means I'm gonna have a black border. All right, I'm going to add one more property, which will be the padding. Okay, so that would be FX padding. So I'm just going to scroll down till I find that. And there it is right there. And I'm going to set that to 10px. All right, so it'll look nicely padded when we print out the results. All right, so that's easy to do. Um, 
Lastly, we're going to go to each control and we're going to connect the um, FX ID as well as the on action. Okay, so the checkboxes, I'm just dropping down here and I'm picking each of these out and also choosing the on action. Okay, these are coming straight from the controller with the FXML variables that I declared earlier. Okay, now the two labels just need the IDs chosen. Um, they don't have an on action, so just click and choose the IDs. And now we've connected everything to the controller, so I can now save this and close this off. And we'll just run the FXML version, because you haven't seen this yet. I'm going to right click and run the launcher file. And um, here comes the version that's FXML. So you can see it looks a little bit different because I did spend some time to stretch out the, uh, the box there for the results. All right, so that's it for the checkboxes. Uh, this is John from JavaFXTutorials.com. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and I hope to see you again next time for another tutorial in JavaFX.